The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it is show thyself for prudent unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. This day of our Lord, April 5th, in the year 2015, the entire world, and even as such, we who really look into the doctrine on the purpose of Good Wednesday, rejoice for the resurrection of Christ in this world. A resurrection of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which occurred 2,000 years back, has much significance for us to be understood. A resurrection which happened in the spirit, taking his physical body out of blood and having that raiment in his spirit so that we have been exemplified many a times through the letters of Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians as well. It is in the spirit of your mind the renovation have to be occurred. Many preachers who do not know the real significance of the resurrection of my Lord, today they just formulate the things as ritually as best they can. And tell again and again, year by year, what is resurrection. But has Christ really been resurrected in you? You may be asking, or, or you may be thinking, how is it that Christ can be really resurrected in me? Christ can be really resurrected only through Bible doctrine. If you have known doctrine, if you have learned doctrine, the emphasis of the word of the Lord in each and every page, right from the beginning of the creation of mankind, is nothing but to give top priority for this truth. The truth which we are waiting, the truth which should reign in us, and that truth cannot reign so easily as you and I can imagine, because that truth demands on part of a believer a daily inculcation, and if there is no daily inculcation of Bible doctrine, then no matter what it is, your life is not been alive far as we can think of a resurrection from this unbelievers thinking many of the people who are considering themselves who do not even have a clue as such what difference does it make for me if I am a believer and if I follow the worldly pattern and if I am an unbeliever and if I do not follow the godly pattern the both are the same the only difference wherewith you have been kept alive is to understand Bible doctrine. When you understand Bible doctrine, then is the reason as such how you are going to be edified. Because many a time in Ephesians 4.24 it has been told the word spirit refers to the individual human spirit. That is an activated human spirit who becomes a trichotomous in nature. And this activated human spirit has to be energized by the indwelling controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we can understand the true purpose of the resurrection of Christ in our lives, not only the true purpose of resurrection, even each and every jaw and tittle or full stop and comma which has been put in the Bible so that we can have complete comprehension of the word of the Lord. Because church is a place of a university and the pastor is a dean and each and every saint 
saint is a professor and in fact even you may have again question who is a saint what is a saint positionally each and every believer has been sanctified and has been kept apart and has been called a saint in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the problem with us is we are not having proper knowledge we are not having enough ministers who take to the responsibility upon their shoulders in rightly dividing this truth we are not having enough listeners as well who can learn this dogmas this dogmas of truth but rather replacing this dogmas they are learning morality they are learning superficial life they are learning which is not natural at all and they are coming to such kind of an extension of thinking that these people are not at all able to realize what is the truth behind it many people who are been occupying into the pulpits many people who are coming to the church to think themselves they are living some Christian life it has to be nothing to be done when you compare to the worldly system because the world and the church are the people who are around here may be thinking themselves what is right and what is wrong but to the point of fact dear brethren the question is considerably true to us to understand how and what is the spirit which involves in this believer life and what is the spirit wherewith you have been called forth to show the glory of the Lord because the word spirit refers to the individual human spirit but here blood got the Holy Spirit which was been energizing the Spirit of Lord Jesus Christ this spirit of the human realm which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could possess that spirit was been now ruling his body and that's what dear brethren we need to understand the spiritual resurrection that's why as an ensemble each and every believer has to take it to the point that he has been indwelled by the Trinity he has been indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit so that Lord God the Holy Spirit in return energizing his activated human spirit can take into consideration of those things and control the physical body with blood while we are still alive in this earth that's why we have been told be controlled of the spirit be ruled of the spirit so that when you're walking in the spirit and living in the spirit you can yield the fruit of the spirit dear brethren that is the great major part which we need to understand and that is the great goal wherewith you and I have been kept alive because it is a tough task always two parties fighting and battling for a single thing here also in nature as well as your activated human spirit so that another controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit could be energized and this both either of the one can control your soul not both at a time so either you sin or you be in fellowship with the Lord when you sin either by your minute thought or word or deed you are out of fellowship because Lord God the Father is so pure that he cannot maintain any relationship with a person who sins because that's why he has been constantly being told for us embodiment in the truth if there is no proper embodiment in the truth then there is no purpose for you to survive in this world many people who have come around with various teachings in their life have really rejected doctrine they do not have top priority for the doctrine they are just keeping the absolute standard of truth aside and they are mixing with the prophecy speculatives or personality guilt or church programs or activisms so our holiness which has to be based on doctrine is what when you will realize when you are out of fellowship telling to the point that you are grieving and squelching Lord God the Holy Spirit and there is no way by paying penance or tithes you can get back to your fellowship but holiness is the quality which has been manifested in those who have a regard for the truth the truth is Bible doctrine so when you know the truth you will come to the point since Lord God the Father is holy 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 which has been told by a host of angels which has been read as a witness even by the prophets which has been told in the future millennium even in the revolution telling to the point holy one holy one holy one and when his holiness has to be praised by our lips which is the greatest gift what we can give in our life then you need to understand how much regard for the truth you are surviving since God the Father is so pure since Lord God the Son Lord God the Holy Spirit is so pure that they couldn't have to be with his son on the cross which we have been noted on Good Wednesday it is not Good Friday many people think it is Good Friday if they could count two or three days from Good Friday the day when he has been crucified that's what the Roman Catholicism dogmas in the evil dark ages of the medieval time have been rising to the core but Lord God the Father in his grace he organized those three reformation movements 
moment we are added by Erasmus so that we can have to understand what is right not to follow the pagan age old worships but rather look into the doctrine and understand the truth and properly apply this truth so that we can have a right and true fellowship which is in accord to the mind of the Lord and to his word not to the traditions of this man and the practices of this world dear brethren that's what we need to understand logically even if you sit and think if it is good friday then how you will participate in this resurrection your resurrection will be on wednesday when one day literally it meant to say 24 hours either in the galilean time or you take into the roman time or the greek the way they have been considering or the jewish the way they have been considering one day refers to literally 24 hours if it was on good friday as the world follows and if it is was around three o'clock he was being crucified and he yielded his spirit to the last or breathed to the last then you have evening six o'clock as the sundown the way how the jewish wants to get down the body of lord and savior jesus christ then what happens exactly from fr friday evening to Saturday evening it is one day then Saturday evening to Sunday evening it is a second day then Sunday evening to Monday evening it will be the third day and Tuesday will be your resurrection which is very wrong and which is very contrary to the word of the Lord Bible doctrine is dogmatically clear and it is truth to the point that's what we need to understand have regard for the truth it is good Wednesday it was Lord crucified on good Wednesday it was not on good Friday as many people come around and teach their debates, teach their theological subjects, teach their viewpoints, trying to tell 12 hours as one day and try to explain the concept which could be fitted for Sunday, which is very, 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 very wrong. The only point we need to understand as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ led and revealed God the Father for the mission through exegesis which has been used in John 1.18. So we believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ need to understand that the concept for biblical revolution is only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the way how we revealed God the Father through exegesis is what we need to understand. And exegesis or the dispensational doctrine is not dogma so that you can accept without question. But here we lead men with such an attitude to life that they could see that certain things must be true by bringing into play a spirit in man whereby God is truly known. This spirit is what you need to understand which we will exemplify in Ephesians 4 24 this is the function of the Bible as a whole it is the instrument of a spirit in creating an experience of divine things and what is this spirit that's what there is a lot of difference between Christianity and other religions there is a lot of difference when Zachar Mike speaks about things which Bible doctrine dogmatically claims and the way he wants to tell and the things which Bible really tells the way a dichotomous person a spiritually dead man how can he understand the divine things but when we are spiritually alive when we are having the spiritual phenomena when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as our Savior and our human spirit gets activated we have much information to be communicated and that information is to be taken to the point not only from the 15th or the 16th century reformation movement even till date each and every protestant should know the truth it is not the age-old practices of the roman catholicism maybe they might have put a day for good friday in the beginning of the first century ad so that they can have saturday and sunday followed for their rest but that's not the truth the truth ought to be good wednesday good wednesday where with people come to learn the importance of the two great sabbaths which would follow and that's the reason they hurried him to get down from the cross they they removed his body and when the crucifagum was been taken into consideration the one who was malleting with the mallet he knew very well that he was already dead so he thought it would be best for me to put a spear so that the scripture could be fulfilled so that the scripture could be fulfilled not to mallet or even broke a, or broke a bone not to have the things unleft so that his spear was been 
was being speared with the javelin and then he could realize this was a truly son of man so that the second person the centurion who has been trained to think logically was a man who was been saved that day dear brethren this concepts of doctrine demands the spiritual phenomena if we neglect spiritual phenomena if you fail to put information for the spiritual phenomena no doubt whatsoever you are performing in this world everything will be equivalent to the roman catholicism of doctrine the word of god is not the last word but it is the only seminal word so we need to understand it is the instrument of a spirit that is your activated human spirit is the key for you to realize this truth and get into this point because holiness based upon bible doctrine demands your biblical truth and this biblical truth is what you have to have a regard because aletheia which has been used is an embodiment of knowledge and truth especially Especially, it is the content of Christianity as the absolute truth. Other religions may come up with their various thoughts and various understandings, like the Zakirnaik or other religions. But Christianity is free from those. It is having time only to give top priority for Bible doctrine, dear brethren. So this embodiment of the truth is what, dear brethren, we need to give top priority in our lives. If we are not able to realize this truth, if we are not able to understand this truth. then our life we can never regard as holiness because what lord god the father demands on part of each and every believer lord god the son executed and we are even there as his sons to execute we are not able to perform it because bible doctrine inculcates absolute truth into your soul resulting in a conformity to the plan of god ignorance of doctrine is replaced by your dedication to doctrine that's what dear brethren you need to understand the embodiment of knowledge and truth especially the con- content of christianity as the absolute truth and holiness is the quality which is manifested in those who have the regard for the truth and if you are not able to have this regard for bible doctrine then what is the purpose that you have been kept alive because how do you know when you are on the road to ultra super grace and super grace by learning the word of the lord you love doctrine above all else you cannot survive without doctrine even for a single day because doctrine permeates your thinking and and becomes your very own life that's why you will realize and you will understand that you are been walking in the path of the holiness of the lord when you are walking not just by listening to doctrine but even practically doing it so in book of the acts chapter 1 very clearly verse 1 it says both he did do and do preach that's what practically as well as theoretically the things which are been required to perform even we believers in the lord and savior jesus christ many pastors calling ourselves that we are not practical to the points of the truth that's why we fail to realize the truths and many pastors who are been occupying into the pulpits are so much double minded with their double tongue that they are not even equal to the morality or the purity of the unbelievers because for some extent unbelievers are true and they are standing for the truth of their integrity but these believers are never true and they call themselves as pastors and these pastors where with they have been occupying the pulpits are double tongued or double minded this double tongue the way they know that they will forget to realize that this bone that this tongue doesn't have a bone so it twinkles or it prandles or it just goes on whichever way it can that's the attitude of a pastor which is very wrong a pastor teacher has to be more bounded than the strongest part which could ever exist in this world more than the physical bone so dear brethren we need to understand it is not only just those things which are thinking which is necessary but your integrity is also necessary to do practically and to stick on and abide for the truth when there is no truth then what reason we can have with you that's what bible tells to us so the word which spirit refers to the individual human spirit that that part of him which gives him god consciousness which makes him a moral agent or a virtue agent the apostle object here is to set forth the moral self activity of the christian life or the virtue self activity of the christian life hence numa spirit here 
is the higher life principle in man by which the human reason weaved on its moral side the organ of moral thinking and knowing is informed the renewal takes place not in the mind but in the spirit of it that's why dear brethren here lord jesus christ resurrected today in his spirit the spirit controlling his physical body which has been taken and into the new realm considering as a resurrection body so the principle even what we have been trained in ephesians 4 24 is that the renewal should take place not in your psychological mind but in the spirit which you have been activated the change is not in the mind which is physiological or psychological either in its essence or its operation and neither is it in the mind as if it were a superficial change of opinion on points of doctrine or practice but it is in the spirit of the mind in that which gives mind both its bend and its material of thought it is not simply in the spirit as if it lay there in a dim and mystic quietude but it is in the spirit of the mind in the power which when changed itself radically alters the entire sphere and business of the inner mechanism that's what lord's resurrection is on this sunday and that's what we are here to tell to you once again you follow year by year reciting about easter or york star many people who have been roman catholically following even the traditions the way they do the dark masses the way they do xyz in their attitudes in their thinking and the age-old practices which they are following which is very wrong in fact even it is not apostle peter the place where he has been selected as rome it should be something known as ephesus ephesus is the place where doctrine has been perpetuated through apostle paul and then timothy and then apostle john and peter was nothing more to be done therewith they consider on this rock when I build my church, telling to the point in Matthew 16, people consider that Peter was the rock and that church place is Roman Catholicism. No way, that is really very wrong. The point is Ephesus. Ephesus is the place where Lord and Savior Jesus Christ established his doctrine, first through Apostle Paul and then through the second generation, Timothy, and then for the third generation, the one who has written these words like Apostle John. So dear brethren, we need to understand doctrinally what is right and what is wrong then we can try to discern that's not possible when you go through your mind which is psychological phenomena that's only possible when you come through the spiritual discernment of your inner activated human spirit to control into the realm of your physical mind because the change is not in the mind psychologically either in its essence or in its operation when you believe in the Christ the activated human spirit which has been made you positionally superior than to the chief fallen angel known as satan but now what you need to do you need to come along with those things where with doctrine demands and this is what dear brethren you need to understand doctrine demands on part of you that you grow up in the word of the lord and doctrine demands on part of you that you can come to the point of experiencing the positional sanctification wherewith you have been saved and in this experiential sanctification dear brethren you have much of your time to grow up and that's possible only when you take the doctrinal content or the doctrinal nutrient if you do not have this doctrinal nutrient then your human spirit which has been activated will never grow up so dear brethren the change is not in the mind psychologically either in its essence or in its operation and neither is it in the mind as if it were a superficial change of opinion on points of doctrine or practice but it should be in the spirit of the mind in that which gives the mind both its bent and its material of thought it is not simply in the spirit as if it lay there a dim and mystic quietude but it is in the spirit of the mind in the power which when changed itself radically alters the entire sphere and business of the inner mechanisms of your thinking so the thing which you have been told again and again put on the new man the word new is kainos not new in a point of time which would be neos but new in a point of quality new in quality as opposed to the old in the sense of outworn marred through age which latter designates referring to the old man so this kainos new not 
not of the age, but new spiritual species, alekinekatesis, which have been told. New in point, what are these alekinekatesis? These are the men in quality. That's why these men are being indwelled by the Trinity. That's why these men have been given the greatest privilege to serve the Lord, though he is a carnal believer by using rebound. These are the men, they have been given such kind of a great worth to the Lord that these are being considering as invisible heroes only when they grow up in spiritual maturity. But since many people do not realize the doctrine of Alekinekatesis, new spiritual species, new quality of time, wherewith the Lord has given for us this great privilege, but not new in the age, or but not new in the period, wherewith they could come as a new one. No, but here it is a new in quality, and Christianity is what quality demands. After salvation, it is not the way of your life that you're surviving, but it is the quality of life that you have led to the Lord under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in return, energizing your activated human spirit so that that activated human spirit can control your mind through the knowledge of Bible doctrine and the mind which could be controlled by the spirit where it it's bent and the material of thought could be brought into the captivity of Christ. And this is what the reason, dear brethren, a quality, quality of Bible doctrine, quality of spiritual nature, quality of spiritual attitude, quality of spiritual resurrection of spiritual maturity to become and to form an invisible hero is the purpose wherewith you and I have been kept alive in this world and this rituals which you have been practicing either if it is the day of our birth of our Lord Christmas which is on December 25th many people forget that they have something a festival known as to the point the Hebrews will come around and have this festival for eight days as the celebration of their victory of the Maccabean war in 167 and that festival which is known as Hanukkah and this Hanukkah is a festival where a point it is a feast of lights and feast of dedication even as such they had a meaning and a purpose the entire seven days was a renewal of doctrine in their minds and the eighth day they would go and disperse to the places and that light represents Bible doctrine and that light represents them once again to dedicate to the biblical truth dear brethren what a great privilege it is for us to understand the significance even the resurrection of our Lord which we celebrate year by year it is the resurrection to be renovated in the spirit of our mind to be thinking and if we do not have anything to be renewed in the spirit of our mind then there is no renovation because psychological renovation or the essence of it renovation or operation of it or having some superficial change of opinion on points of doctrine or practice will never give you this thing dear brethren that's why we need to understand the teachings of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the way to lead men with such an attitude to life that they could see that certain things must be true by bringing into play a spirit of an activated human one in man whereby God could be truly known. This is the function of the Bible as a whole. It is the instrument of a spirit in creating an experiential sanctification of divine things to be understood. Because when you have the renovation work done in your spirit, not in the mind, you have really changed yourself to learn Bible doctrine. And if you are not able to understand this simple quality, wherewith you have been called for the kindness, then Lord help you. Today many people might preach with their various dogmas, various thoughts, and various human viewpoint of experiential things, but doctrine is very clear. If you are not able to renovate in the spirit of your mind, that is the activated human spirit which has been given to you, that activation of the human spirit which demands on part of you to give top priority for Bible doctrine because a mind psychological change is not required. Superficial change of opinion of doctrines or practices is not required, but the spirit of the mind is required wherewith which gives not only to the mind its bend and it's thought but rather it also gives them time to understand it it is not simply in the spirit as if it lay there in dim and mystic quietude but it is in the spirit of the mind in the power which when changed itself radically alters the entire sphere and business of the inner mechanisms of your thinking until and unless this human spirit can give you an assurance like for such kind of a Zakir Naik who claims foolishly about my Lord because he tells when there is no crucifixion 
resurrection, then there is no resurrection. That is the ultimate thinking of him. But what we are here to tell to you, Mr. Zakir Naik, until and unless this spirit, it is not simply in the spirit as if it, as if it lay there in dim and mystic quietude, but it is in the spirit of the mind, in the power which, when changed itself, radically alters the entire sphere and business of the inner mechanisms. Your entire sphere and your entire business of your inner mechanisms depends upon Bible doctrine and the activated human spirit with the nutrient, the way it takes doctrine and grows up in doctrine and gives to you to understand that the new, the word new is been used for kindness which is of quality and that quality is each and every believer designed in eternity past to attain this goal and if you are not able to think it then we are still married in our old sin nature so man is again anthropos which has been used the individual since the old man refers to the unsaved person dominated by the total depravity of your old sin nature the new man refers to the saved person dominated by the divine nature this new man after God is created in righteousness and true holiness is what Paul refers to when he says in 2 Corinthians 5:27 after God is catatheon, which meant to say according to what God is in himself that is created after the pattern of what God is the expression true holiness could better be rendered holiness regarding of truth or holiness based upon truth which personifies and being opposed of the decide which has been used when you were still in your old sin nature so this is what dear brethren we need to understand the holiness based upon truth, the holiness based upon doctrine. And if there is no doctrine and if there is no other way, then the embodiment and knowledge of truth, which should be the content of Christianity, is not at all possible. So, kai hosietis tes aletheia. If you reject doctrine, if you are not able to understand the spiritual resurrection, if you are not able to understand the spiritual phenomena wherewith your activated human spirit being trained up to control your mind only through knowledge of Bible doctrine, then only you can get every thought into captivity of Christ and then you can really enjoy the true resurrection of my Lord. Because every year by year, till you could die in this earth, you may perform the festival of this yoke star or Easter or the resurrection of my Lord. But that is doesn't make any sense without your true resurrection in your spirit the true resurrection of your spiritual resurrection claimed in philippians 3 12 and 13 there apostle paul tends to say i have not yet attained my spiritual resurrection and that spiritual resurrection refers to the unique spiritual life all like new spiritual species a quality of life wherewith you have been given this protocol plan of god you have been told this unique spiritual life wherewith understanding this unique spiritual life understanding and getting into this new protocol plan of God, we need to understand that we have a spiritual adulthood life, followed by spiritual self-esteem, then your doctrinal status quo, cognitive self-confidence, your problem-solving device number 7 and 8, sharing personal love towards God the Father and impersonal love towards all mankind, and then your suffering for blessing, a testing process wherewith you are having, will be having providential preventive suffering. And when you pass down this first stage, you return, you gain to the second stage that is spiritual autonomy. Here a doctrinal status quo is cognitively independence, no counseling, any other thing. Here for you, the word of the Lord will be more than anything else. Your love to doctrine will be above all anything else. You cannot survive without it even for a single day. This will be your way. You have been dedicated to Bible doctrine because holiness based upon truth is the way which Lord wants us to be manifesting the quality which we have been regarding for the truth in the sight of the Lord and then next what you do your problem solving device is sharing the happiness with Christ whatsoever you have you have everything in Christ and then sharing the happiness in Christ you have your testing momentum testing under four categories which way you go either people testing thought testing system testing or momentum testing wherewith you will take into consideration 
mission, each and every thought, keeping eyes on Christ, not on people, not on self. And then when you pass down this test, you have reached the status quo of spiritual maturity. And that status quo of spiritual maturity is what it has been termed as spiritual resurrection in Christ. Wherewith Apostle Paul tells to them, I have not yet attained that stage. Therefore, I'm living behind those things and I'm looking forward to the things which are there for me to retain that, to gain that. Exactly the manner is for spiritual resurrection, dear brethren. If we do not have the spiritual resurrection, then there is no point of thinking of your Christian life, no point of thinking legalism or asceticism or moralism or any other attitude. It is the renovation of your thinking. It is not dogmas or doctrines. It is only leading up in your spirit under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith you can reach to this third stage of your adult spiritual life. So your spiritual maturity followed by the doctrinal status quo of cognitively invincible nature that is cognitive invincibility that is what dear brethren here you have nothing else than doctrine here doctrine permeates your thinking and it becomes your very own life then you have the problem solving device number 10 which is occupation with Christ and when you are being occupied with Christ there is nothing you to keep yourself occupied among the people or for the health of this world but you will be looking upon occupation with Christ so here this is what what exactly the doctrinal point of view we need to understand here more you reign in doctrine not in any other things there when you're having the evidence testing that is a suffering for blessing this evidence testing here no one's prayers will be answered no one's intercession will be claimed but only the doctrine in your soul which you have feeded will come back to your rescue the doctrine which was resident in your soul will come back for your application and this doctrine when you apply and you pass the evidence test either to one you get which is towards life or towards God if it is life like the Job Old Testament hero or if it is for God or the plan of God it will be like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ there you give top priority for doctrine and you have nothing else than doctrine when you pass down either of the one test which will be given for you because here for God resembles to your ministry faithfully handling the truth having doctrine based upon holiness and having holiness entirely given a regard for the truth that's what here you need to pass if you're a pastor even like the other kites you need to have your integrity to show forth even if it is for life like the Rechabites you need to stand for the words of the Lord and execute either the gift which has been given to you the gift of health hospitality or any other things that have been given to you and when you pass down this test you will have the final status quo of maximum glorification of Christ and this sort of quality believers of kindness is what Lord looks for you and for me and that's the true spiritual resurrection for a believer in Christ who is still alive till he could go and die in the Lord and see his, spiritual, his physical resurrection in the body when he gets up at the rapture or the things that could occur. But right now we need to exemplify this ensemble of spiritual resurrection. This spiritual resurrection is what it has been quoted for us again and again without doctrine or embodiment of knowledge and truth. The content of Christianity cannot be existing because with the embodiment of knowledge and truth is the content of Christianity as an absolute standard and Bible doctrine alone inculcates absolute truth into your soul resulting in a conformity to the plan of God so ignorance of doctrine should be replaced by your dedication to doctrine and how do you know you can attain or you're putting steps to the spiritual resurrection you will know that when you go on to the road or to the plan of grace because you love with grace orientation and doctrinal orientation the doctrine above all else and you cannot survive without it even for a single day because doctrine alone permeates your thinking and becomes your very own life so with these few points I conclude my sermon and tomorrow we shall continue our discourse but at the end I would like to wish you all a happy spiritual resurrection to the journey of your life whichever way you could get Apostle Paul took three years and how many years you will take because Apostle Paul was a ready man he learned 
different doctrine of the Old Testament time and in the New Testament time he took enough time to get it back but we do not know either the Old Testament to be learnt under the feet of Gamaliel nor the New Testament doctrine but we have the great master teacher of all time who is Lord God the Holy Spirit only your positive volition only your desire for truth only your love for God your strength in your character and your incredible stability to retain in that character through perseverance through motivation through momentum so that you can share the happiness of Christ alone can give you this great knowledge of the subject from Old Testament till to the New Testament so that happily you can tell to the fallen angels as well as to the holy angels I have even experientially attained the position wherewith Lord has set me higher than the chief fallen angel known as Satan and these things dear brethren we shall continue in our next step but the things that are there for us to understand is that today is a day of the resurrection of my Lord which is absolutely true and a great joy for us that even we also will reign over death because the sting of the death power has been gone but are we spiritually resurrected in Christ is the question that we need to answer our own consciousness as Lot told in Luke 7 52 telling to the point if you could judge yourselves what is right can you not know what is the truth behind that exactly we need to judge ourselves have we been able to attain the spiritual resurrection or have you ever heard that there is a plan for this unique spiritual life of alakenicetesis new spiritual species of quality a quality of being indwelt by the invisible power of all time known as the Trinity power Lord God the Father, Lord God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit, so that each and every believer can turn out to become an invisible hero and not an invisible villain by negligence and ignorance and arrogance to, to learn and to grow up and to comprehend Bible doctrine. So the simple logic answer for you is that grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With our head bowed and our eyes closed, the closing movements have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life in the privacy of their soul when they could inaudibly express to God the Father telling to the point that they believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life and having this eternal life is not a point to live a life of useless quality on this earth but after salvation what is we are been emphasizing to the believers not answering back Zachary but a grace provision for the unbelievers as well to believe in Christ so that even they can have this eternal impact an impact of personal one historic one international one angelic one and in fact even the heritage impact so that we can understand the truth and the truth shall set you free so that you will become an invisible hero of maximum glorification unto Christ and fulfill the astral blessings in time as well as an eternity only when you grow up to the knowledge of Christ which has been given for us in the renovation of your thinking only through the power of the of the ministry of the spirit through your activated human spirit by learning doctrine because this activated human spirit alone can yield you and can guide you to bend and to make the material of thought into consideration in the power of the spirit because it is not simply in the spirit as if it were there lay in dim and mystic quietude but it is in the spirit of the mind in the power which when changed itself radically alters the entire sphere and business of the inner mechanisms wherewith each and every believer have been kept alive in this pilgrimage tour so as such which way you go dear brethren that is left to you but it has been my honest plea and humble request for you to have the this true spiritual resurrection of Christ to be understood rather than following ritual resurrections every year so grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so father we are grateful for the privilege that the given to us of fellowship with through thy word with this few exhortation words at least few people can come to know what is the true purpose and the true spiritual resurrection that we have been kept alive in this earth to be attained so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified to this extent we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit take these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge for the asking in Christ's name, Father. Amen.